Hello guys and welcome back to another episode of Open Computers Challenge. This is MCSH and in today's episode we are hopefully going to expand our little house over here. You know, I want some more leg space. It's really cramped up. You know, just... Ah, I need more space. I really do. But, yeah. Okay, so in order to do that, uh, we need different materials. We need some oak food for the corners of the house. Uh, we need 10 oak food. And aside from that, we need some planks for the floor and for the ceiling. And we also need some sand, you know, for the glasses. And we need a furnace to smelt the sand, right? And that's a lot of different things to want for one episode. But uh, here's to hoping that we can, you know, we can get it to work. So, uh, first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to create a little small, and I wish I used the first one. Alright. First thing we need to do is create a small pickaxe for Gladys. Here you go, buddy. Use that wisely. So, if I'm not mistaken, uh, Gladys can select different items in the inventory so uh, we kind of need to have a oak food on the first slot always so we can say select three and it would select the third slot and we can say select one and it would go back to the first one again what does select without any parameters do uh, okay it returns which slot it has selected all right, and uh, I think we have a use function as well. All right, so the use function basically right click. So if it's a door, it would open up, you know, uh, things like that. So what we need to do uh, is use a different function that would allow uh, Gladys to change the main active tool here. So looking at the open computers documents, uh, it appears that we have an equip function that basically swaps the content of the tool slot with the currently selected inventory slot, right? And the way to use it is by using the component that inventory controller uh, component, basically. So, uh, if we need the robot to basically, you know, put aside the pickaxe for a second, uh, all we got to do is select an inventory slot, let's say nine, and then component dot inventory controller equip and you know it would put the pickaxe away and that way it's going to save a lot of space for us you know right so uh, and let's put this away so we need to use that approach there and in order to make it easier I'm going to define a new move, func move uh, function for ourselves. I'm going to call it function move that equip pick, and uh, it's going to be a simple function. We need to get the component first, and then. Tell the robot to select the slots, and I'm going to just say, uh, let's say it's slot number nine. So just assume it is slot number nine, and then uh, component dot inventory. What was it? Inventory manager, inventory controller, controller dot equip. Right. And that way, uh, the robot can uh, equip or unequip the pickaxe, right? And uh, yeah, 
So uh, I'm going to define a new word for the group in the pickaxe. I'm going to call it EP, right? And the function would be move that equip pick. And so we need to return two different functions, two different uh, values. So I'm going to return uh, true and nil. Doesn't matter if it actually succeeds or not. I'm just going to say that it did. Right. So uh, with that in mind, let's try the robot. So if I say local move is library move, and I say move that move equip pickaxe. Yeah. And if I say it again, it should do that. If I say do it two times, you see it quickly jumps between them. If I say it four times, just repeats it. So, uh, first thing first, we need some cobblestone, and that should be easy. Uh, all you need to do is, with, with, uh, with the pick in your offhand, I'm going to say that's offhand, you need to swing down in order to remove the, you know, the wood down there. Or basically down, that works too. And then uh, let's go down two times, I guess. Then equip the pickaxe, and then down eight times if you're lucky. Uh, that should be enough. And then come up ten times. And then then what? Place down. Right. One other thing that I think we need to do is we need to tell the robot to uh, select the first item inventory afterwards. So we need to go back to the first item right after we uh, switch to pickaxe. That way, when we need to put the items, you know, back in its place, it's not going to cause any troubles for us. So, I'm going to turn this off and on again. Lua, local move is leap slash move, move that move. Uh, well, robot that select the first slot, and then move that move, go down twice, then equip your pickaxe down eight times up ten times and then uh this unequip your pickaxe and then place down right that should be easy let's go to the spectator mode okay so I'm guessing eight times isn't enough and oh there's a cave I hope we don't end up going into the cave Right this second. Oh, okay. Right, so I think that was a success. Switching back to the survival. We have five cobblestone, which is, you know, not that bad. Okay, let's do that again. But this time, after you equip the pickaxe, I want you to go forward one block, dig down eight times, come up. Eight blocks, go back, up two blocks. So uh, we dig eight more blocks using the pickaxe, right? Let's follow. So it goes one block forward and then starts digging down. Well, yeah, that should be enough for a furnace. And then. Uh, we still need to chop some wood, so uh, let's see if we have any good trees nearby. I think uh, I think that one is close enough, right? Right. Let me come outside. Yeah, we have ten cobblestone, which is enough, I guess. Uh, right. 
Okay, so uh, now we need some sand uh, first. So um, we need to come over here, which is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven blocks forward, and then you know gather some sand. How much sand do we need? So we need uh, if you're going to expand by four blocks. We need uh, nine on this side, nine on the other side, nine on the other side. So 27 different sand blocks. Okay. Let's go to the survival mode. I'm going to edit the test file that we have over here. So go out of the house. So what I wanted to do, basically, let me show you using the spectator mode. I want the robot to come out of the house, move 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 blocks, so it would be here. Go down 2 blocks, so it would be in the sand, and then move forward for 9 blocks. Turn this way, move 1 block, turn this way, move 9 blocks back, come up 2 blocks, and then move back to the house. That's the idea. Right? And I know this... The syntax is a, is a little bit messy at this time, but that has to do for now. We don't have any other options. And you should be able to be on the exact same spot that you left. All right. And this syntax is a little bit messy, so we need to figure out some way to, you know, reverse it, basically. So that we don't have to, you know, give it uh, information like this. And I think I don't need this anymore. All right. So let's say Lua source. Oh. Lua source test. All right. I guess I made a mistake again. So this is why we need a uh, this is why we need a function to tell the Gladys that it's not in the right spot. You know. Uh, let's go to the survival mode real quick and then you know use our function to go back. So but we need to go down one two blocks and then forward one two three. Down two blocks, over three, up two, place down. All right? And oh. Okay. We cheated again. That's not good. Alright. Um Okay, so uh that didn't work exactly as we hoped it would. And uh, so let's not waste any more time and actually work on the reverse function. And I'm hoping it's not that uh, that hard to, you know, perform the reverse operation. So I'm going to create another function. Um, reverse dot lua, and it's going to basically look something like the move function especially this one you know but uh, we are going to work on a strings of course so let's create a package and then let's say that we have a function well actually I think we can do this right yeah so you give me a path I'll give you another path, right? And um, I'm going to find different words, all right? So this is the same regular expression as before. We're just going to, you know, break the path into different words. And then I'm going to find the different 
numbers like how many times are you going to are you planning to run this command and then what is the command right okay so uh, we need to have some variables for ourselves uh, I'm going to call them X and Y oh, as well as orientation just going to call it O short for orientation right so uh, they're basically I think uh, six different commands that affect these variables right so and they are not that hard if the word is up oh actually there is another one I, I forgot about that so if the word is up and that's not how you write okay if the word is up we increase the Z by one right well we don't increase it by one we increase it by num depend like it could be up five times so we increase it by that many times actually can I do this can I do this I hope so we'll find out if the word is down then we're going to decrease it by that number if the word is forward then we are going to okay so if the word is forward we need to see what orientation we are in and then depending on the orientation that we are in we need to do something different so uh, let's think about that later so if it is turn left then the orientation would be minus one and um, so the, uh, in the beginning the orientation is zero when I say turn left it, it would become minus one when I say turn left again it would become minus two and so on and so forth and that way we can keep track of how many times you have turned around so in the end we can tell our robot to you know move back the way we want it to right and yeah but because we want the robot to be in the same state it was when it started moving outside and I'm going to also divide that by four just so okay we can do this can I do that right great the same thing for right but instead of minus one is going to be plus one and it's the same thing for turn around but instead of plus one it's going to be plus two right so now we can keep track of the orientation of the robot so for the forward i'm going to assume that if i'm looking you know in the general direction Okay, this is going to be a little bit tricky. So if O is zero, then I'm going to increase X by the number. Oh, and these all should be num, of course, not one, right. If O is 1, then I'm going to increase Y by 1. Wait, yeah. So X would be going directly and Y would be going right. If O is 2, I'm going to decrease X by the number and oh my god, this should be num as well. Finally, if O is 3, then 
I'm going to decrease y right and uh, I'm not sure if you can see but this is a little bit messy and we have to repeat that for forward back left and right well we, we don't have a left and right at the moment but yeah we have a back so uh, anyway I'm going to make our life easier by creating a new function called move oriented right and it's going to take a number current orientation x and y and it's going to return x and y right and of course it needs these values inside to keep track all right and here all we need to say is x and y equals to move orient oh move oriented uh, with number o x and y right yeah so this way we can keep track of how much we have went in the same direction so if my uh, string is something like go forward two times and then back two times I am exactly the, uh, where I was supposed to be so I don't need to you know do anything basically I'm just trying to keep track of how much I've moved and for the back function it's basically the same thing except we are going to trick the system into believing that the orientation is in the other side so we're going to trick the system and say that oh think you've turned two times and then basically do what you are going to do right okay and after you've gone through all of this and let's just remove that we don't need that anymore well let's look so we have is covered we don't need to reverse the swing actions we have up and down covered we don't need to you know reverse the well we do need to replay, uh, reverse the creep action okay but that's I'm not gonna worry about that right now uh, let's just write it somewhere that to do account for EP okay so at the end, print, I am at uh, x, well, wait, that's not going to work, uh, well, yeah, I think this is going to work. right yeah hopefully let's see and uh, actually you know to make our lives easier I'm just going to create a fake reverse function call it the reverse function with a fake input I'm going to say go forward two times turn right and then forward one times turn left and then go back two times just to see where it ends up so it should be uh, x at 3 turn right so x3, y1, turn left, b2. So x1, y1. Okay? Let's see what happens if we call our function. So Lua library and then reverse. Attempt to call global str. Okay. Uh, is it a string? I'm not sure what the thing is called okay um, Lua integer to string okay we, have, we need to call to string right to string and then to string okay I am at one and one. Okay, so the reverse function knows where we are at the moment. It was able to keep track of all of the actions going on here. So now we just need to, you know, reverse it. 
So, uh, first we're going to go back uh, the X way and then the Y way. Does that make sense? Hope so. Right. So, I'm going to say we need to have an answer, which is the empty string at the moment. So, if x is lower than 0, then answer should be whatever the answer is, plus go forward, how many times is that? Go forward uh x number of times so to a string of x and then a comma at the end else if x is higher than zero answer should be whatever answer is go backward to a string of x and a comma i think uh this should be negative x actually so that's the x, and then for the y, if y is lower than 0, you need to turn, which side do we need to turn? So uh, lower than 0, that means we are, if this is the starting point, we are over here. So we need to turn right, and then go forward string of negative y and then have a comma at the end if it's higher than zero then you need to uh, turn left forward the same thing okay now we also we need to count for the orientation as well so uh, in this case, we don't. In the x case, we don't need to turn at all. In the y case, we have time to turn right, so we need to do a turn left and here a turn right. Okay. Right. And finally, here we need to, you know, turn to the way that we want. So, uh, if orientation is one, then. Okay, so 1 means we need a minus 1, so that's a turn left. The answer would be whatever the answer is with a turn left. Else if this is 2, then we need a turn around. Finally, if it's 3, then we need to turn right. Does that make sense? I hope so. Then we are going to print the answer and then return the answer. Let's try it out. So, if I'm at 1 and 1, what should I do? We should go back once, turn left, go forward once, and then turn right. That seems like a good idea, but let's try it. And uh, we have an extra comma at the end, but that, that shouldn't matter. That's fine. Oh, that was OES. Um, right. So I'm not going to use this one. I'm going to go to the test file and you know, import the reverse. And I'm going to create a path which is go forward eight times no forward two times and then up once oh we need to uh, we need to account for the up and down as well and that's easy actually so up and down if z is less than zero then ants would be up to string of negative z 
with a comma at the end and else if z is greater than zero else if then ends is ends with down the string of z with a comma and of course the end okay so go forward two times go up once and turn right go back once just to see what happens okay that's our path and we're going to say move that move path then move that move the worst of path whatever that may be so the robot has to figure out what is the reverse of this do that and then it should be in the same place that it was before okay uh let's see Right, let's go into the spectator mode. Wow, such a flawless reverse. I, I really like that. That was great, actually. Okay, you know what? Uh, I just need a couple of more sands, and I think uh, that should be it for this episode. So let's go and change our path. We don't need you anymore. So uh, we need to count first. So turn forward, down twice, and then what? And then turn left. Go forward four times and I don't care where you are. You can find out. You can reverse the path yourself. No, that's a lot easier, right? And we don't make any mistakes this way too. So, do it. Oh, oh. I made a mistake actually in choosing the in counting right and okay it's going to you know mess up the environment that's fine why is it turning like that It's going to dig until here and then come back this side. Oh no, it's going to... Okay. Yep. Alright. Uh, thank you. Why were you turning like that? Okay, that made no sense. But that's fine. We have enough sand, and that's all we care about. We can patch that up later. Uh, let's actually get one of the trees too. Well, no. Uh, I'm going to make one adjustment though. Uh, I noticed that... I think it would be better if we move it up first, and then, you know... I think this should go up here. Like, first fix the Z level and then figure out the rest. I think that's safer. You know, just in case you're underground, you're not going to, you know, mine everything on our way up. Right? Yeah. That makes sense, kind of. Doesn't it? Anyway. Alright. Thank you for joining me. I really enjoyed playing uh, this game. And I hope you did too. Do let me know uh, here or in the Reddit, uh, wherever you feel comfortable. If you have any suggestions for me, I really enjoy talking to you guys. And yeah, have a good day. Bye bye.